Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the workbench. I'm Dan here as always, and in this video, we're going to be talking about styrene fabrication for model trains. This is something I use quite often, and I've touched on before in a couple of my different videos on super detailing locomotives. And I resort to styrene fabrication for many of my parts. Um, as you guys know or may not know, I do a lot of styrene fabrication for modeling. I make a lot of my own parts from scratch. I make ditch lights from scratch in a lot of cases, uh, unpowered dummy ditch lights. I make all kinds of things, the waste retention tanks fuel tank details, pilot details, a lot of these things I make from styrene from scratch to save money. Um, also because in a lot of cases a lot of these parts aren't readily made and are available in HO scale which is unfortunate. But a lot of these modern detail parts like the waste retention tanks for example are on just about every modern diesel and they're something I have to scratch build quite often. Uh, other details I can scratch build are antenna bases and all kinds of other little details and I'll show a couple examples of various parts, various things, and various models I've used styrene fabrication on to make certain parts and we'll discuss that a little bit. But the primary focus of this video here is talking about the styrene fabrication and where to uh, really put in styrene fabrication for your modeling. Uh, where it can benefit you, where it can help you out is what I really want to talk about in this video. Uh, there are so many uses and so many applications for styrene fabrication. It's so easy to use. It's a very forgiving material compared to say uh, photo etch, uh, brass sheets, uh, things like that. It's a very forgiving material. It's very affordable, very cheap. It's easy to play with. Uh, it's very forgiving in the sense that if you make a mistake, you can always cut a new piece out very quickly and efficiently, and it doesn't take that much time to do. Uh, a lot of these parts are very easy. And again, I'm going to show you guys just a few examples of where these parts can be made and what kind of things you can use styrene fabrication for to get you started. Uh, certain little things that can help you out. And I'm just going to touch about this uh, just very briefly, like I said, and we'll go through a couple different models and I'll show you guys some techniques and some tricks on making little parts that you can use. Now I will be demonstrating a couple examples of styrene fabrication that I'm going to be using on a couple projects and in particular some of the guinea pigs that I'm going to be using for this video are an SPSD40M-2 which I'm working on, uh, this guy right here, and I got another locomotive that I'll work on here as well uh, for some reference and things like that we'll come to later. Uh, but for now we're going to be working on the SPSD40M-2. I have to fabricate a, a multitude of different parts for this locomotive and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and get to the workbench and we'll get started on filming some of this stuff here. So the kinds of styrene I'm going to talk about very briefly here are the kinds of styrene that I use the most often. And the products that you'll usually see out on the market for hobbies are products by Evergreen and Plastruct. Uh, I believe there are some other companies that make styrene and it really uh, comes down to your preference there, what's most affordable and what manufacturer makes the kind of styrene that you need. The most common kind of styrene that you're going to find is styrene sheets. In this case, Evergreen and Plastruct make stock styrene sheets in various sizes. And most of the time, the kinds of styrene that you'll run into are O10 inch, O5 inch, uh, you'll find um, O20, O30, O40, O50, O60. O60 is pretty thick, uh, but obviously the smaller the thickness, uh, it's going to be pretty paper thin when you start off at, uh, say, O5 inch, which is very paper thin styrene material, uh, but this is handy. I use this a lot. It goes up to O10 inch, which is a little bit thicker. You go up to, uh, again, O20 inch, and then all the way up to O30, O40. In this case, this is a very thick sheet of O40 inch styrene, which is nice for making car sides and other details that need a little bit of thickness and detail. O40 inch styrene, for example, is also great for building structures and things like that, which I've done before. Uh, but there's a lot of different sizes of styrene sheets that you can use for model building. And in a lot of cases, I usually buy all kinds of different sizes and I stock them up on hand. As you can see, I have a very wide variety of styrene stock materials and I always try to keep the packages and labels. Uh, for example, here's a package right out of the bag and as you can see, usually when you go shopping for this stuff or looking it up, you can always refer to the sizing and on the packaging here, what kind of styrene it is, in this case V-Groove. So you would use this for, say, boxcar siding, caboose siding, structural siding, which is what I used in this case. Uh, but it comes in various patterns, various sizes, but the most common style of styrene sheet, again, you're going to see is the very plain, basic styrene sheet like this. The other kinds of styrene that are available to use are styrene rod, uh, various styrene shapes, like uh, various styrene stock sizes, things like that. A lot of times you can get styrene strips like this, which are very handy in various thicknesses and sizes. There is a large, wide variety of different sizes, and I use many different sizes for my modeling to make all kinds of details. And you can see this example is by Plastruct, which is the, another company that is very good for styrene plastic um, manufacturing. And again, they offer very different sizes, all kinds of different material 
thicknesses, all kinds of different styles of styrene that you can use in projects. So these are just a couple of the kinds of styrene that I use, uh, just to touch on that very briefly. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about what I do, starting with styrene fabrication, looking at our model to decide what we need to build and how I go about choosing the styrene, cutting it, and working with it. This particular locomotive here is the one I'm trying to model with my SD40M-2. This is 2738. And there's a number of styrene fabricated parts that I'm going to need to make for this model, so it's a good reference on how I'm going to go about making styrene details for this. The first details I want to talk about are going to be the roof antennas. Later on we'll get to modifying the trucks with styrene pieces, making some other various little details, and we'll be making some other details for the underframe uh, for some air filter parts and things like that. So we got a lot to cover, but I'm going to go ahead and get started by talking about the antennas. In the case of this SD40M-2, I have to make the specific antenna plate from scratch out of styrene, and I'll be showing the various sizes of styrene I'm going to use for this, how I go about cutting it and filing it and installing it on the model. So with any kind of styrene fabrication and making detailed parts like this antenna tray, for example, you always want to pay attention to the size, the dimensions, and the thickness of the material used on the prototype, and you want to try to scale it down as accurately as possible and choose the right sizes. That's the most important thing here. You obviously don't want to make a detail like this too thick or too thin where it looks unrealistic or tacky or toy-like or a giant molded piece, which is even worse. Uh, you want to have it to scale and you want to make it look realistic. So always choose the material based on the size that you need. So always pay close attention to your prototype and the, the particular prototype detail that you're trying to manufacture to get the right size of styrene and things like that. You can scale it down. And in this particular case for this intended platform I'm going to be using some 015 inch styrene which has a pretty thin profile but it still has a little bit of durability but it's also very flexible and easy to cut still. So I'm going to be using this to start off with and the basic tools that you need to cut styrene you can use scissors, you can use a metal straight edge, I always recommend a metal straight edge and the best tools to use for also cutting are X-Acto blades which I pull out here and you can see I have various sizes of uh, X-Acto blades, I have a number one and a number two the number one X-Acto blade is best for thinner pieces of styrene like this. If you're getting into thicker cuts of styrene, like 040 inch, 060 inch, 080, for God's sake, uh, then you want to get definitely something a little bit beefier. In this case, a number two X-Acto, which is a lot stronger, a lot durable, larger blade, larger tool in general. Uh, so you always want to make sure you have the right tools too, but I recommend that you always have uh, a couple different X-Acto knives with brand new sharp blades metal straight edges, and of course a pair of scissors, pliers, anything like that that can help you manipulate the styrene and cut the shapes that you need to. The other tool that will be your friend when you start off styrene fabrication will be a pen or a pencil to help guide you on making the various sizes and shapes with your styrene. Uh, obviously you don't want to cut this a hundred times though the material is very forgiving. You want to try to get this right the first time around if you can. And it comes down to practice. Uh, after a while you get really good at this and you can eyeball your measurements and sizes and cut rough pieces to uh, basically a rough size. But when you're beginning it's best to have your straight edge and make measurements. In this particular case I've measured out the antenna platform on size and I've put little mo basically little lines on the styrene sheet here as measurement guides for the length. So what I'm going to do is take my metal straight edge and I'm going to line this up just like this over these little lines. And I'm going to try to make this as straight as possible. You want to try to keep this as straight as possible. When cutting the styrene you want to use a brand new nice sharp blade. With thinner styrene like this it doesn't take much pressure. All you got to do is make a quick cut like this, a second one if you need to, and a third one should be enough to cut it. In this case I'm actually going to need a fourth, there we go. But it doesn't take that much pressure. Uh, you don't want to try to jag your knife right through this stuff. You want to try to make very soft gentle cuts if you can. Um, it's obviously a little bit easier with thinner styrene like this, but the benefit of cutting soft score lines to start is that you don't get jagged lines and you don't risk accidentally swerving off or bumping into your straight edge and knocking this off. And because we took our time with this, we now have a nice, clean, perfectly cut piece of styrene that we can start working with. The next step here is to measure the length, the length that we need this to be to fit over the particular part on our model. And in this case, I'm going to, again, take my straight edge, measure this out, and I'll make the mark and we'll cut it. As I said, the great thing about styrene is that you can make little details like this example here, this little bracket where the conduit leads into the antenna platform. We can make this very easily from scratch compared to say if you were trying to do this with brass or um, stainless steel sheet, anything like that would be very tricky. Styrene, it's very easy to drill little holes like this if need be, and I will demonstrate. 
As you can see here, again taking my sheet of O 15 inch styrene, I've taken, made a little mark, and cut a little hole into this, just using my X-Acto knife, but you can also use drill bits. It's very simple and very easy to get through styrene sheet. After you've done that, then it's just a matter of tracing out uh, how far you need to make this piece, and then cutting it out. Okay, so I have the two pieces of styrene prepped and ready to go, and we're basically going to be taking this piece that we just cut out, and we're going to be putting this on this piece, like this. And this brings us to the topic of bonding pieces of styrene together. Now, there are many different kinds of glues you can use for styrene. Uh, the best kinds of glue in this case, especially for getting started, are super glues and plastic cements. Uh, we'll first talk about the super glue real quick. The best kinds of super glue to use, I find, are the medium grade super glues, where they're a little bit thin, but they do have some thickness to them. They work the best for modeling. They have basically uh, ample time to set up and dry. You can play with the part a little bit and get into its final position before it sets and it's a very strong bond. Um, I don't recommend you use super thin CA or super thick CA. Super thin CA has a tendency to run all over the place. Super thick CA takes a very long time to dry and it's a bit more messy so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, the best glue to start off with is the medium grade cyanacrylate adhesive super glue stuff here. Uh, so that's the super glues out of the way. The other glue you can use, of course, is a very popular method, and it is the plastic cements. In this case, I have Plastruck Plastic Weld. This is a great bonding agent for styrene. However, you need to keep something in mind here with plastic cements. When you bond with plastic cement, plastic cement will melt the plastic and fuse it together. The problem that we have here with a smaller piece of styrene, a thinner piece of styrene in this case, is that the, uh, basically the cement has a tendency to melt through and warp the plastic. And in this case, the finish is more important than a bond because if I try to take that plastic cement, put it on this part, it's going to melt this piece, and I don't want that. You can use the plastic cements mainly on anything above 020 oh, inch styrene, uh, but anything under that, I do not use the plastic cement for, and I don't recommend that you try that because it will melt the plastic and it will screw up your part. So in this case, the best option to install this small part here will be the super glue. The way I personally like to bond these little pieces together is to take my cap off the super glue and then get a little piece of wire, a piece of a needle, something like that where I could take and very carefully apply just a very small drop of glue to my applicator. And this gives me just enough glue. That's all the glue I really need for this. It does not take much. You don't need to saturate the part. That's another thing I see a lot of newcomers to this do. They soak their areas or their parts, or whatever they're working on, with glue, and then it just makes a mess. And then you have to go back and clean up with sandpaper and things like that. Um, but in this case, we only need a little bit of glue for this part, and then we're just going to carefully position this piece on. And you can see how quickly it actually bonds the piece on here. But we do have enough working time, and if we hurry up and quickly get it in place, you can see we have it installed, and it's almost an, a pretty much an immediate bond here. And if we look at that from the end that we're going to be seeing, you can see we have the part in place, and it looks pretty good. Uh, but that's how easy it is to use the cyanacrylate adhesive. It's almost an instant bond, pretty much. So at this point, what I'm going to start doing is piecing all the little parts together with the same techniques I've just demonstrated for you here by cutting various grades of little styrene pieces uh, to basically make the stands now for the antenna plate, and then I'll put the detail part on the antenna plate here, which will be the actual antenna itself. I'm using an atherin piece for that. And I'll show the antenna pretty much when it's done, and I'll install it on the model. Here is the piece now finished. All I've done here was added the detail part of the actual antenna itself. This is an atherin piece. This is a styrene molding, and it looks very nice on this piece. And then I added the legs, which I cut and fit to size. And the model... Here is the antenna now finished. You can see I actually installed the antenna on the platform now, and I got the legs on as well, and I've cut these to size to fit around that uh, section on my locomotive. Uh, but that's just how easy these kinds of fabrications are. This only took a couple minutes, and we have a really nice looking detail part ready to be installed on my model. So that's just one example of some of the fabrication. I'll go ahead and move on to another example here.